Hey, it's Sean from Crafted Elements, and this video is going to be on the three types of molds or forms that we would use to create an epoxy resin and wood charcuterie board or sewing board like this. Um, also, you could use these same molds uh, for other resin art, small format um, resin and wood art. So the three types are really um, wood and tuck tape, which is the older kind of laborious method where you have to physically build a form out of plywood, which I'm gonna show you how to do in a minute, um, plywood and apply tuck tape. You got the more modern stuff, which is the HDP and silicone forms. Um, we actually sell silicone board molds at boardmolds.com. So our company, Crafted Elements, uh, does sell those molds uh, for makers. Um, there's also companies that make HDP molds like this or like this. Um, the disadvantage of the HDP molds is that um, they still need to be screwed together or unscrewed to take your piece out typically. Um, and they also need to be sealed, uh, maybe not every time, but every once in a while. Um, otherwise you'll have um, your resin leak out of them. So that's why we actually created these, these big heavy duty, thick walled and thick bottomed um, silicone molds. So these are more for higher end hobbyists, uh, professional makers and, and people who are actually building goods to sell, whether it be at the market or on Etsy. Um, these are a huge time savers. You can see they're super flexible. This is our 18 by nine. We've also got this big 24 by 12, and each of these are an inch and a half in depth and interior depth. So it will allow, allow you to create a pretty thick uh, board, or in this case, maybe a small tabletop. And uh, the advantage, clearly the flexibility is that you can pop your wood right in there, put pour your resin in there, and as soon as it's set, you literally pop it right out. There's no screws, there's no latches, there's nothing to fiddle with. I think the disadvantage to these is there's no built-in uh, clamping or weighing system, so you'd have to use a small weight on top of your wood or on top of your piece if you want to keep the wood down so the resin doesn't push up on the wood and get under the wood. Um, but anyway, in this video, I really wanted to just kind of go over the, the disadvantages or the advantages of each of these. And for the you know beginner or hobbyist or someone who's making three or four uh, of these boards a year, the wooden tuck tape method is probably the best method because it's just super cheap. Um, and you're not gonna be you know seeing the advantage of buying one of these silicone or HDP molds as far as the cost savings over long term. If you're building multiple units uh, a month, totally invest in a silicone mold from us or an HTP mold from someone else. Um, and again, these silicone board molds can be bought from boardmolds.com. They'll redirect you to our craft developments page where we sell these molds. Anyway, let's get started on building the wooden tuck tape mold and we can, uh, we can see where we end up. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is determine the size of the mold you're making. Um, it's normally determined by the raw wood that you're gonna use. Maybe you've already got a predefined mold, uh, size in mind and you'll cut your wood to that. Um, but in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this piece of silver maple in half and then flip them to make our board. So just for the sake of demonstrating how to make one of these molds, we're gonna make this fairly small. We're gonna make it 16 inches. So our, our board mold is then gonna end up 16 inches long, probably by about eight to 10 inches wide. So we have our two live edge pieces of wood that to come together something like this uh, to make our uh, board. Now, what, what you have to do before you pour your, your, your material in here, your resin in here, is remove the bark. Now, most of the bark is already removed from this. If you actually had thick bark on this, you'd want to use something like this, a bark removal knife. Um, you can actually get this from Amazon. This one's by Beavercraft. And essentially what you do is you drag it underneath the bark and you pull the bark off. And I can show you that in a different video. But for this one, since the bark's already removed and there's just kind of a remnant, we're just gonna use an 80 grit, uh, you can even use a 60 or 40 grit sandpaper to remove the bark, the rest of the bark.
see, the bark is gone and you have a pretty clean surface. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, just enough for the resin to uh, make contact and bond with the wood. All right, so we've got our live edge wood cut. We've sanded the uh, bark off and removed the bark. So now we have to determine the size of the mold that we're making. So in this case, we're building a mold to fit the wood pieces we have. But in probably a lot of cases, you're gonna determine a specific size, like you wanna build an 18 by nine board or a 20 by 10 board. And that's the size of the mold you're gonna make. And then you're gonna cut your live edge wood uh, or your whatever wood you're using to that. We just work backwards in this case, but it really doesn't matter. I just started with what material I had to build the, the form to show you how to do it. So in this case, we're just gonna line it up approximately how we want this board to look once it's filled with resin. Um, and then you're gonna take your measurement. So this is uh, 10 and a half by 15 and a half. So, grab our pencil. Uh, I'm using three quarter inch plywood here. It's probably a little higher end than what you actually need. Um, you can use white melamine, like a chipboard with a melamine surface that works as well. Uh, some people just pour the resin right into the melamine after you use a mold release. I prefer to use the tuck tape because it is much better. Um, so 10 and a half by 15 and a half. We're going to cut this out of the table saw and then we're also going to cut out the edges of the, um, of the mold. So uh, in this case, we'll always just rip this entire thing here and use these sections to make the edges and I'll show you how to do that in a second. All right, so we've got the bottom part of the mold cut. It is 10 and a half by 15 and a half, the same size as what our live edge wood is gonna line up into. Uh, the next thing we need to do is build sides. Now, I, as you can see, I did this in a way where these, the wood's gonna be, um, the sides are gonna be attached to the side of this. Uh, you can also do it on the top of it. I really don't think it makes a difference. You still have to seal it and tuck tape it. Um, I just find this way easier because it's just easier to start by cutting the final size. Um, what you'd want. If you wanted to use the, if you wanted to attach the sides to the top of this, then you'd have to make every dimension uh, out by another, the, the thickness of your board. So in this case, our, our plywood is three quarters inch. So we'd have to add three quarter here, three quarter here, three quarter here, and three quarter here, if that makes sense. But in this case, we're gonna end up with a 10 and a half by 15 and a half inch board. So this is a 10 and a half by 15 and a half inch piece. Now, you need to make the sides. So this is fairly thin stock. I think it's, yeah, it's three quarter inches. Most uh, live edge pieces you're gonna get are maybe an inch, inch and a half. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make the, the side a little bit higher than the finished height of this board. So together, you can see that we have three quarter inch, three quarter inch, that's an inch and a half right there. So you're probably gonna wanna cut the sides at two inches just so they come a little bit above this board so your resin doesn't, your resin when you pour it, doesn't overflow your mold. All right, so we've got the two longest sides and we have these sides. So we're just gonna do a quick trim on the miter saw. And sand and deburr these edges just so uh, our tuck tape sticks to
All right, we've got all the pieces of our wood form. We've got the bottom and we've got all the sides. So the next thing to do here is just cover all the interiors in tuck tape, rather the part that's gonna be the interior of the mold. You don't need to cover the entire thing in tuck tape, that's kind of a waste of time and energy. Um, but what I like to do is I just start with the bottom one and you wanna make sure that it goes down very, very flat because if you end up with, you know, debris underneath the tape or the tape folding, you're gonna end up seeing that in the resin and you're gonna to have to either plane or sand that off. So as I'm doing this, you're probably realizing that this is a very tedious process to make one of these molds compared to just buying an HDP or silicone board mold. And you'd be right. Um, again, the, the big thing is, is time versus money. If you're doing this as like a hobby, just building a few a year, this is just, this is just fine to do it this way. But if you're gonna be making multiple units a month um, or doing this as a business, then, you know, it's a function of your time, how much money you're making, right? So, so you're gonna to wanna to invest, invest in uh, proper molds. And that's why most of the companies that make molds, including ours, um, make the standard size molds. So 18 by nine, 24 by 12. Uh, some companies make round molds. If you're doing like round boards, uh, we, we don't have one at this moment, but we probably are developing one. And uh, yeah. So you can either cut the edges off or wrap the tape. Doesn't really matter because you're still gonna have to, um, you're still gonna have to seal the edges anyway. So whether there's tuck tape there or not, doesn't really make a difference. The key is you're gonna wanna make this leak proof, which again is where the silicone molds excel because they will never leak. Uh, even, uh, a wood mold can leak if you don't seal it correctly. An HDP mold can leak if you don't seal it correctly. Um, the silicone molds, the silicone molds will not. So I've built a lot of these um, prior to developing our line of molds, and um, I don't miss it. <laughs> As you can see, this is not the fun part of the job. If you're building something big, like a table, then you don't really have a choice because there's not any huge silicone, like huge as in, you know, six feet long or five feet long, right? Um, it's not really a silicone or HDP mold that size as of yet. Um, and I think they're, they'd be really cost prohibitive uh, because both silicone and HDP are quite expensive. So you really have to be uh, making a lot of those tables if you want to justify a mold that size. All right, here we go. The last step in assembling this mold, you can use an acrylic caulking or you can use uh, pure silicone. It really doesn't matter. Um, they both have to dry, uh, you know, before you uh, before you do your pour anyway. So for the, this demonstration, I'm just going to use the acrylic stuff. It's easier to clean up. So you've got a bead all the way through. You've got your other piece, and you're just going to join them. Make sure you work it in to make sure that that silicone gets in everywhere. Because trust me, the last thing you want is a leaky mold. So if you're planning on reusing this mold, um, pre-drilling the holes and using screws would probably be a better idea. But in this case, I'm only using this mold once and I'm only doing it for demonstration. So I'm gonna use my finishing nailer. As you know, when you nail it together with a finishing nailer just a few times, uh, it's pretty easy to take the walls off with a, uh, a hammer or a mount when you need to. Now we're gonna 
do the sides. You can see there's a little bit of a gap here, not a big deal, because the silicone's gonna uh, be acrylic or the silicone, <laughs> the acrylic caulk or the silicone is gonna deal with any sort of gaps if you use enough of it, right? So. All right, so walls are all assembled. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is seal the inside corners. Um, you, you, you probably have a pretty good seal as it is right now, but especially if there's any gaps, you can see there's not really a gap here, but there's a little bit of a gap here, um, then you're gonna to wanna to do this. You're just gonna to wanna to do a quick seal all around. And again, you can use the acrylic caulking or you can use actual silicone. Um, I just use the acrylic caulking because you're going to end up um, trimming the board down and planing and sanding it anyway. So if you get a little bit of the acrylic caulk inside the, uh, the corner of the resin, it's not that big of a deal, but again, your call. Use the caulking or use the uh, the pure clear silicone. Just wipe as much off as, as you need to to get it out, out of the actual surface. You really just want to work it into the edges and the corners because that's where your leaks are going to happen if they if it's going to happen. And that is it. What you're gonna to wanna to do now is just let this uh, silicone or the acrylic caulk or your silicone dry, typically within an hour or two. And you will be good to place your wood and pour your resin. So if it's not obvious by the end of this video, making one of these um, plywood or melamine and tuck tape molds is not difficult but it's time consuming. I mean, I don't know what point we are in this edited video, but I would imagine probably 10 or 15 minutes in, and uh, now we have a finished mold. Versus if you're going to be making uh, consistent size boards every time you make them, or maybe making uh, you know slightly larger boards and cutting them down, then the silicone molds that we sell at boardmolds.com or the HTP molds available from a couple of other companies in this space uh, are definitely much better. So again, you know, building this and dealing with that versus this, um, I think the answer is pretty obvious. Uh, the one thing we haven't touched on is once you actually put your wood in here and pour your resin, you need to take this apart um, and you're probably going to end up breaking it or, uh, you know, the tape's going to be worn or whatever, right? So this is really only going to be used maybe one time, two times, three times. I've seen maybe I could probably get three or four uses out of this. Um, but this or one of the HTP forms you're gonna use pretty much forever. As long as you don't, you know, take a chainsaw to it and, and dent or scratch the inside where you're gonna have your resin poured, this is a much better solution. So if you wanna get one of your, old, uh, your own 18 by nine or 24 by 12 uh, board molds to work on charcuterie board and resin art, feel free to go to boardmolds.com or craftedelements.com and then just click on molds at the top and uh, happy making.